It is a battle for the mind, first and foremost, as you shared the other day, Jerry, talking about those fiery darts. All the more so in our culture, everything's hitting the mind. I mean, we, we have such a set of moralist values in our culture and, and in every which way, if we can get people to laugh at sin, we can get them to like sin. And, so we have a tremendous battle before us. Now I've promised we're going to identify some of those strongholds, but let me ask first, you're American? How, what was your first clue? Um, <laughs> <laughs> love that drawl. Uh, <laughs> just facts. Um, I'm warm. Uh, no, I love it. It's warm. It makes you feel warm in you? winter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you studied, you chose to do your doctoral study at Acadia University on our East Coast. Why is that? Well, we purposely did, both my wife and I. We had had a scholarship at a seminary to do our doctorate in the U.S. But when we looked at Acadia University, the Divinity College is so solidly evangelical. And I must say, to the credit of Acadia and to that school, it was really kind of head and shoulders above the postgraduate theological training that we had received in the U.S. It's one of the toughest um, challenging, rigorous demons in, in North America. So 15 times I flew there with my wife and we both graduated together. How sweet. Did that time and, and, and your doctoral thesis equip you for this new book, Christians and Demons? No question about it. I mean, the, the scholars over at Acadia Divinity and, and really in that doctoral level, going back to the original manuscripts. You know, you can't do a master's and a doctorate without learning Greek and learning a bit of Hebrew. So we take the English text back or back to the original. Yeah, I've loved the, the Greek. Well, it's just so important. I mean, you, you know how in translation great. we have a tendency to lose the original. And so I'm very, very grateful for that experience and learning maritime culture, how Wonderful that is. Indeed. And the I've, muscles are good too. I've tasted it too. <laughs> okay, page 74. Do you want to use your book? Yeah, sure. Because I really want, we've had so many emails, and again, I'm going to take a lot of these questions to Crossroads 360 right after this half hour. Many, some of you need counseling, uh, some of you need community, uh, and uh, many of you need more of Christ. But I want. God directs a moving ship. Some of you are stuck, and uh, many of you are just stuck. And I want, Jerry, I want you to take us through detecting demonization. Well, let me Where switch are those? books Here. with you. I've marked that, it for one you. One that actually has some print in it. All right. Uh, the demonization is important. Any unnatural fear, un unnatural fear, periods of depression, extreme depression. So these are paralyzing. Absolutely. Emotions. We would call them demonization. Uh, continual confusion in the mind and inability to let God's word take root. Obscenities and profanities assaulting the mind <clears throat> where we're losing all moral, uh, moral sense in our mind. Suicidal and murderous urges. Urges to abuse drugs and alcohol. Absolute rebellion to authority. Marital conflict, and I might add kind of a serial drive to adultery. Violent urges, violent auditory suggestions, mm -hmm. violent visions. You know, what There's I like- Voices is, in the mind? Yeah, and what I like, it's, this is not just my list, but Kurt Koch, the German theologian, Alfred Lecker, uh, Merle Unger. I went through all three of those great legends and, and really kind of reduced it to the top 10 or 12. The book's crucial because it gets way in depth, far more than we can here. I know it's spooky to people when we talk about demonization. You know who came to my mind today was Patsy Claremont. You would know her well. She's a popular speaker yeah. with Women of Faith Ministry. I remember her telling us about being a prisoner of agoraphobia. She did not go out of her house for six years. She was in bed for two years. Now she's on a jumbotron in front of thousands. That's the liberation the Lord wants to bring. He died to bring us. Uh, First John 4, 8, perfect love casts out all fear. You know, I came from depression, you know, I almost you killed myself. Yeah. And God released me from that. And I believe that, that we break bondages through the power and blood of Jesus Christ. I don't care what generational curses or sins we inherit. Probably an addiction personality ran through my family like the Grand Canyon. Through the power of Jesus, that was broken. And I want to just encourage people today, we can break those addictions. I know our time is up, but 
would you say a short prayer? I've got names on my heart right now of people who just don't know how to take a first step. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would give the power of your spirit to break bondages over men and women that have been stuck. And we ask in Jesus' name that they would realize that through your spirit they can overcome. We bind the enemy in the name of Jesus and the spirit of ignorance. And we ask for your liberating power to touch hearts that are hurting and fill them with your love in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Don't be satisfied with that stuck place. Call our prayer line right now and have someone pray with you, believe with you for a new beginning. And make sure you get this book, the teachings all in here. And you, we've got our own soldier that we'll show you later because we are so out of time right now. Stay with us.